Hey guys, long time no see. Uh, it's been a while since I've done anything with this channel, and I really don't know if this is going to work tonight uh, because the auto zoom on this camera is not being cooperative. Um, but we're going to try this and see what we can come up with. I'm filming um, my rosy boa, Chloe, in her updated uh, terrarium. I have started upgrading all my habitats for my snakes uh, and now I've got uh, uh, one other critter that I'll do a video on sometime and another one on the way but um, anyway I've started upgrading to um, try to make their habitats as natural for them as possible and as enriching for them as possible um, yeah, you know, um, I've been doing a lot of research and joined a lot of uh, Facebook pages uh, and following a lot of videos and whatnot on uh, naturalistic setups, bioactive setups, and really my goal is just to make um, one. I, I do want to make sure these uh, terrariums are, um, you know, very beautiful setups uh, for display. But I also want to make sure that my pets are getting as much enrichment and that I'm simulating their uh, natural environment as much as possible. Um, so let me just show you. This cage is in the best order at the moment. So I thought we'd start with this. Um, just do a little sweep of it. So there is a beautiful piece of dragonstone there. I uh, got the idea from that uh, watching the Bio Dudes video on setting up a, a rosy boa habitat and I looked all over for um, dragonstone and I found that one piece of it and <laughs> I had to get it. Um, there's her log with her moss in it that she loves. Um, you know the rosy boas are from the desert so they don't need just a whole lot of humidity um, but they still you know like a little bit of moisture um, you know and it's really best that you you know have at least one humid spot for them I'm finding um, or I should say uh, you know credit where it was due I was told by someone on a uh, Facebook page that that was the way to go you let your snake choose and so that's what I've been doing. I set up a little humid hide, but I've also learned that their instinct being from a desert environment is to seek out moisture. So you, it, it's kind of like a paradox. You need to make sure they have a little bit of moisture to go to, but you don't want to overdo it because they'll just stay in it. And, you know, because they're in the desert or from the desert, that's not a good thing for them. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not getting this focus exactly right, but uh, anyway, so yeah, but she's got one place where she can go and she can lay on a little bit of damp moss. I don't try not to overdo it. She's got a little water dish so she likes to drag everything through and her hide on that side. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of greenery tucked back in the back there. So yeah, um, really I should have let the plants get established, but since I'm, before, you know, putting a snake in the cage with them, I've learned that the hard way, but, you know, I'm kind of upgrading existing terrariums, so I guess I didn't really have that option, but, you know, it's something for the future to remember. And girl. Where are you going? There we are. She is just beautiful, isn't she? Unfortunately, she is my least friendly snake in terms of handleability. I mean, she's not aggressive per se. It's just some rosy boas, 
most rosy bows are pretty good and the, 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 I highly recommend the species in general uh, for um, handling but every now and then you get one that's a little bitey because they have that boa food response and she will chomp on your hand and whenever I'm in her uh, enclosure it's a little bit like Captain Hook and the Crocodile. She's always coming to get me. But we're working on it. I got it where she doesn't bite the gloves. So now if I can just get it where she doesn't do that to warm flesh, I'll be doing good. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's see what else about this enclosure. I have springtails in here uh, for cleanup duty. Um, don't have the uh, isopods yet. I'm trying to, I want to make this as naturalistic as possible, I'm, I guess is the word. I'm looking for a isopod species that does good in uh, desert environments. If I can get one from the American Southwest, that's even better. Um, but uh, if you all have any recommendations on that, I'd much appreciate it. Let's see. And she loves having all these little nooks and crannies in here to explore these warm rocks. I need to get another hide for that corner, I think. I'd like to get like a, a ceramic buffalo skull or something she could climb in. Give an old western feel to this. You can probably hear my cat howling outside the door. He's not happy. But uh, he would be so much interference with this video, it wouldn't even be funny. Hey, Chloe. What you doing, girl? But uh, she's doing real well in here. And I have noticed since doing this that all the snakes that I've been able to upgrade, I've still got one I need to upgrade, um, but I've noticed their behavior has changed so much. They're so much more active. They're uh, so much more, you know, just, I, I'm, I'm seeing so much more natural behavior from them. Um, that I didn't see before when they were in little plain setups. Uh, I see a lot more tongue flicking, which is a sign that their brains are working and, you know, they're processing sensory information. Uh, and they just seem, you know, so much happier and, you know, to be eating better and, which I mean, that didn't have too many problems eating before, but every now and then I would. Um, yeah, it's... You know, proven to be a really great thing. I'm still learning. I'm still exploring, um, you know, how to do all this. Still learning how to work a camera, <laughs> I guess. Um, but overall, this is proving to be a really fun and really great experience. And, I mean, you know, I'm still tinkering. I'm, I'm you know, never totally satisfied with how these cages look. But it's also not really about me. It's more about the snakes themselves. I don't know if we can see her back there. No. Well. You can kind of see her creeping along back there. There we go. But uh, anyway, so this is just the first look at what I've had going. Um, I'll put a link uh, to uh, the uh, Bio Dudes uh, video on how to set up a Rosyboa bioactive uh, terrarium. And, you know, I, I uh, guess as I uh, go through this, I'll show you all the others, uh, you know, as I get them fixed up to where I feel like uh, they're good enough to show off. And, you know, we'll go from there. All right. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe.